Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Jurassic Park video where today we take a slight turn on the content and try something new for a change. In today's video we'll be discussing 10 facts about Jurassic Park that you might not have originally known about. We cover all things to do with Jurassic lore and other dinosaur movies here on the channel, but one thing that we have rarely done is talk about the facts of these movies and things that happened behind the scenes during production. So we're testing that out today, so be sure to show your support on the video if you enjoy by liking the video and commenting your favourite Jurassic Dinosaur down below. But for now, let's get into these 10 facts about Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is undoubtedly one of the greatest movies to ever exist. This has been something that the majority of people can safely admit for a while now. But there were plenty of fun facts and events that occurred pre-production, during production and post-production of this movie. While some people will go on and on about the inaccuracies of the dinosaurs from the movie, some other people may mention inconsistencies from the movie. One of which is our first fact of the day involving Dr. Ian Malcolm. Now, with movies, they're expected to have a few mistakes here and there that involve consistency. But what about a movie mistake that is so inconsistent that it may have never actually existed? Well, during the T-Rex breakout scene in Jurassic Park, we are aware that Ian Malcolm starts waving a flare around, trying to get Rexy's attention away from Alan Grant. Little did he know that he had to stand still in order for the Rex to chase the flare instead of him. However, the moment he holds his arm up with the flare, you'll think it's all normal, right? Well, it is, until you brighten up your TVs and zoom in on his arm. It seems like he has a very faint yet dark rectangular tattoo on his arm that we've never really seen before. It seems normal enough, but something that you never noticed. However, this tattoo was rarely seen in other scenes across the Jurassic Park movie. What's even more odd is that this tattoo is so inconsistent when it does show up. There's numerous of scenes where Ian does not have this tattoo, but there are also a couple scenes where he does. Pretty much the only scenes where we can see this tattoo is the one with the flare with Rexy, and the other scene is where he is shirtless, where we can only faintly see his tattoo. Not only that, but Jeff Goldblum in real life also does not have a tattoo at all. But this always begs the question as to who's at fault with this inconsistency. Was it just a stamp that Goldblum had that day, and all of the scenes we see him with it were filmed on the same day? Was it originally intended to be part of the movie, but later they decided against it, but instead kept the best takes in the scenes where we can see it? Or, my favourite one, is it just another universe colliding with ours, where the universe shows the tattoo in Jurassic Park the entire time? Well, some guesses are more likely than others, but as far as we know for now, this still remains a mystery. Now, up next for fact number two, we always talk about what ifs in our life. What if World War II never happened? What if you went to school that day that you decided to instead skip? Well, what if James Cameron directed Jurassic Park? This was almost a reality in 1993. During the 80s, James Cameron, the director of the Avatar movies and Titanic, was in initial discussions to purchasing the rights of Jurassic Park to later produce a movie based off the novel. The battle to adapt Jurassic Park to the screen started and ended before the novel even released. Steven Spielberg was in touch with Michael Crichton while the author was still working on the book, and he got to the people of Universal to start bidding for the rights of Jurassic Park. Also in this bidding war, were Warner Brothers Pictures, who would have put Tim Burton at the helm. James Cameron was in the mix too. He came within hours of winning the rights that were fortunately passed on to Steven Spielberg. He says it's probably for the best that Spielberg ended up getting the job. He claims that he would have made a much more grown-up picture, but what would this grown-up sort of picture look like? Well, we kind of have a really good idea here, thanks to the rest and the future of his filmography. We've already seen how he handles a battle against a predator, maybe even a mother predator with eggs. In his own words, Cameron says that his Jurassic Park would have been aliens with dinosaurs. Further, nastier, much nastier than the movie that we ended up getting. 
I guess it could kind of be represented as an Avatar and Jurassic Park 4 mix. After all, weird dinosaur-human-alien hybrids were originally planned for one of the completed scripts of Jurassic Park 4 in and around the year of 2007. But James Cameron said it himself, we should be glad that we got Steven Spielberg on the project instead. Moving on to fact number three now, we discuss the late Richard Attenborough who portrayed John Hammond in Jurassic Park. Richard Attenborough was around the age of 69 years old when Jurassic Park released in cinemas, playing the oldest character of the trilogy. However, what you might not have known is that Richard Attenborough retired from acting in 1978 at the age of 54, before Jurassic Park. However, he was approached by casting directors for the role of John Hammond in Jurassic Park. Attenborough agreed to make a return to acting specifically for the Jurassic franchise, as he later returned in 1997 for the release of The Lost World. He was an avid admirer of Steven Spielberg's work, which solidified his choice after hearing that he was working on Jurassic Park. Because of this, and this movie, Richard Attenborough came out from retirement from acting. Sadly, Richard Attenborough died in 2014 and didn't get to see the start of the Jurassic World trilogy. But it's pretty cool that an actor came out of retirement just for this movie. During the filming of Jurassic Park, the production had to shut down for a couple days as Hurricane Nikki was set to hit Hawaii in September of 1992. This was all by coincidence, as there was also a hurricane approaching Isla Nublar within the fictional story of Jurassic Park. Some filmmakers and directors saw this as a perfect opportunity to gather some unique and original footage of this real-life hurricane whilst everyone was taking shelter in the hotel that they were staying at. The footage that was taken during that time can actually be seen in the final cut of the movie for Jurassic Park. When I was younger, I always noticed this brief, quick scene of water hitting a seawall and it always stood out to me, just because it seemed a little bit different. Now, I know it's because there was an actual hurricane occurring at the time and that was the footage of it that was posted into the movie. Now before we move on to our fifth fact of the day, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so and want to learn more from this movie franchise. We're currently aiming to hit over 200,000 subscribers before Jurassic Park's 30th anniversary in June. So all of you 86% of people who aren't subscribed right now, but are probably watching this video, let's try and change that by bringing it down to 80%. All you have to do is turn that red subscribe button grey. Now, during the production of Jurassic Park, the animatronic Tyrannosaurus Rex was given a nickname of Roberta from the crew. That's probably why you hear some people being confused and call Rexy Roberta. This is because the animatronic behind the scenes was specifically called Roberta instead. So, with Roberta being made of millions of parts to make up one gigantic robotic dinosaur head, it was inevitable that something could go wrong. And so, of course, it did. During the scene where we see Rexy escape from her enclosure in Jurassic Park, we know that the rain was slightly heavy as the storm was approaching the island. However, what some people didn't know is that the water also affected the animatronic dinosaur, making its commands a little, let's say, off-center. This can be seen in the final movie. When we see Rexy having an attempt to eat Lex and Tim, we see the animatronic come completely flying through the roof of the car, almost hitting the children. That's simply because it actually malfunctioned and went a little too far forward. So, those screams and tears from Ariana Richards and Joseph Mazzello were as legit as they come. They were not told anything prior to this incident, but the film crew decided to go ahead with it and it worked out very well. Not only that, but whilst this is happening, you can see a tooth get chipped off from the Rex for just a frame within the movie which is later used to explain why Rexy is missing a tooth in future movies. The Spaz-12 shotgun was used for the character of Robert Muldoon, who was portrayed by Bob Peck. Bob Peck had more to say on the character of Muldoon, enough so that he requested a prop Spaz-12 shotgun for the movie as he felt like that would have fit his character even better. So, that scene where we see him prep the rear grip of the shotgun happened thanks to the actor himself. 
Not only that, while these may still only be rumours, but the Spurs 12 may have heavily been featured in the earlier stages of the Call of Duty video game franchise due to the creator's choice after falling in love with Jurassic Park. Again, that's just a rumour for now, but Bob Peck had a say in what weapon would be used for Robert Muldoon. During the creation of Jurassic Park, it was agreed that the park would open to a total of 14 species in the movie, similar to the novel's count with slightly more species. It only ended up being decided to open to a total of 8 species, Ankylosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Compsognathus, Dilophosaurus, Gallimimus, Parasaurolophus, Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus rex, with Velociraptors as more of a scientific study rather than attraction. However, the writers and producers decided that the park opening with so many species would have been an odd choice, and so they left the remaining creatures stranded on Isla Sauna before we even found out about that island. Creatures such as Baryonyx and Segisaurus were on that roster for the original Jurassic Park opening. Whilst we have lived for 30 years now as Sam Neill who plays Alan Grant, a character that undoubtedly everyone loves, Alan Grant could have looked a little different after all. Back in 1991 when casting calls were going around and being made for the movie, Sam Neill ultimately won his role. However, other actors such as Harrison Ford and William Hurt were also in contention to play the beloved paleontologist. Harrison Ford, as we all know, has played big name characters such as Indiana Jones and also Han Solo from the Star Wars Skywalker saga. For him to be a part of Jurassic would have been incredible, but also perhaps maybe a bit too much of an overhaul. Whereas William Hurt, who has played General Ross, also known as Thunderbolt Ross and potentially Red Hulk, in the MCU, has passed away back in March of 2022, very recently. So, should he have held the role for Jurassic, it would have indeed been very sad to see Alan Grant on the big screen despite his actor passing away. So, we know that William Hurt and Harrison Ford were also up for the role of Alan Grant, but something strange that has come through quite recently is that Harrison Ford will be taking over the role that William Hurt was portraying in the MCU for Captain America 4. So, it's weird to see how things come in full circle like this. If you were to ask me, Sam Neill was the best pick and they got that completely right, but it does interest me as to what a Harrison Ford Alan Grant would have been like. The original ending of Jurassic Park is something that can easily be remembered by millions as it seems like our main characters are inches away from death just for Rexy to come out of nowhere and devour both Velociraptors. However, this ending was supposed to be slightly different in the original ending that was scripted. Originally, Steven Spielberg wanted Alan Grant to go ahead and kill one of the Velociraptors in the final chase scene. His plan was to somehow knock a Velociraptor onto some machinery and have Alan Grant send it up into the jaws of the Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton and impaling the Velociraptor, allowing for the heroes to get away afterwards. That definitely sounds much more underwhelming than to what we got, but Spielberg's reason for not using this was simply because he believed that the Tyrannosaurus Rex was the star of the show after all, and felt like she deserved that one last spectacular moment at the end of the movie. And thank god he did. <laughs> what a scene it was. Besides, we got to see a Velociraptor get impaled in the Lost World a few years later, so it's not like we didn't get to see that original scene after all. And finally, for our last fact of the day, we end on a high and positive note that has to be said. Jurassic Park was the start of an expanded universe movie franchise that would spawn multiple merchandises and video games, but most importantly, six total movies, one series with five seasons and two short films to its canonical roster. But the best part? Jurassic is currently the only expanded universe franchise to average $1 billion per movie. This doesn't mean that every movie has hit a billion, it just means that all of the money made by all of the movies equates to around $6.1 billion in total. An incredible fact, and it just shows how much the fans are in love with this franchise.
So there you have it, 10 facts about Jurassic Park that you probably didn't know about. If you knew any of these prior to this video, be sure to let me know down in the comments, and if there were any other facts, why not also let me know those too. This franchise has come a long way in 30 years, and it's nice to see the continued support of it. And furthermore, it's nice to see the continuation of it as more movies are set to come by, hopefully very soon. Thank you for watching today's video, and please feel free to subscribe and share this video around with your friends. But most importantly, all I ask for from you guys today is to make sure you're all staying safe out there, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Hello, hi, you, did you enjoy the video? Just a little reminder to press that like button and also subscribe. I just want to thank my Patreons for this month on screen right here, as giving me that little extra support really does go a long way. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.